All right, everybody, welcome back to another fun edition of Atheists Having Cocktails with Christians. I'm back again with my good friend, Sanctuary Pastor, uh, Bible study writer, vocalist, the great legendary Christian metal band, Vengeance Rising. And uh, we're going to have some conversation tonight and have a little bit of fun. And Roger, good to see you again. And thank you again for being on the show again. This is this is always a good time talking with you, my amigo. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, definitely, man. It's, it's uh, you know, you, you've you been a really great thing in my life over this past year because, again, I always wanted to do this. I just never got around to it. So having people like you help me, you know, put the fire under my feet, that's totally perfect. Now, this is going to be a really short part three, everybody, because, you know, we've gotten some, you know, views and some phone calls, but very few compared to what we should have. Mm -hmm. at this stage from people who you know we sold over a hundred thousand albums and uh you know i used to get a bunch of and again that was a long time ago so people just need to know about it so um we need to somehow you know let people know that these the series exists and um also you know as i mentioned last time i have cancer and uh i, I plan to live another 10 20 30 years but in the meantime i'm gonna put my will together and you who are watching can be a part of my will. For instance, I'm going to be giving away my Stratocaster, my beloved Stratocaster with my Floyd Rose on it. It kicks ass. But I'm going to put it in my will so that one of you will be the recipient of that. And again, it's you know not going to be anything immediate because I'm going to live for some time. But when I do die, you'll get it. And all you got to do, to it, there's three steps. One is to read Christopher Hitchens, God is Not Great. You have the link to it, uh, and you get the book for free. And it's a great book. So once you've read it, give me a three-page report on what you thought of it, uh, some of the highlights you found useful, information you might not have known. And you know that's step one to get you into my will, literally my will. And I have my my home recording studio I'm going to be giving away to somebody who does this also, um, et cetera. So we're going to give you guys some fun stuff. Um, and again, the comedians, uh, last two times, you know, I give you Christopher Hitchens and Richard Dawkins. But this time, uh, I want you to watch on YouTube. Just type in Ricky Gervais, religious humor, or George Carlin, religious humor, or John Oliver, religious humor, John J-O-N, Oliver. I mean all fantastic award-winning comedians and they're all atheists and you know they're just having a great time having fun helping people be real with each other and you know to be real with themselves so um that's what we're we're going to be doing so if you take have have some fun and let me know what you thought about those episodes um so the other thing is that uh, I want to let you know, uh, we're going to talk tonight about blessings and angels. And here's the thing, everybody. There are angels. They're a baseball team out of Anaheim, California. And Not outside a of baseball them, team. <laughs> outside of them, there are no angels, there are no devils, there's no saint, and there's no God. You know, and so, you know, quit pushing this, particularly on children, man. You know, at the ages of seven or eight, they're having these kids take the communion. Again, they eat the, the Jesus and they defecate it out of their anus into a toilet. It's blasphemy. And then they drink the blood of Jesus and they urinate it out of their genitals into the sewer. It's blasphemy. And so, you know, don't and don't I, you know. I was watching some episodes of some religious services where people were in line to go up and get their little wafer and their and their thing. And I, I used to hold Seder once a year is when we did it. Uh, when I was when I was a pastor, we held a Passover Seder. Yeah. You know, we had a huge meal, man. We ate to our hearts content. It was great, man. It was it was it was a you know a solemn ceremony, but we had fun, man. It was a uh, you know when it came to the part of the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the wine, but. You know, that's when we do. But some people are doing it every day, some people every week, some people every month, and they're pushing on kids. And again, it's a it's a divisionary thing where these kids aren't going to be taught how to think, but what to think. So a woman that I've been in touch with recently, her name is Joy Berry. And um, 
Uh, definitely let's get her her face on the screen. Okay. Uh, Joyberry.com uh, is, is you can go. She has sold over 85 million books, children's books, ages, you know, one to three, three to five, so on and so forth, mm -hmm. about teaching children how to think and not what to think. Mm -hmm. And so because some of the people who have called me already, they're, hey, Roger, I have kids now and this and that and everything. And yeah, we'll use Joy Berry's, um, you know, expertise and have her help your children grow. Uh, and, you know, so that's a fantastic thing to do. And mm -hmm. so as for blessings, you know, I I bless people all the time. You say, well, what, did, what does that mean? Well, okay, for instance, the last episode, uh, Simon lets you know that his co-pilot was Sailor Jerry, the rum. So what I did was I sent him a case yep. of Sailor Jerry rum. <laughs> yep. gonna, this is bottle number two. I've already went through two of them. But yeah, there's there's four more downstairs. But yeah, he did. He I, He's like, where do you get your stuff? I sent him the closest place where I usually buy my stuff. And he called me and was like, Sarah, go pick it up. And I was like, really? So I went to the store. I'm like, hey, you got it. And they had it. They had it there sitting waiting for me. And I wanted to say... Thank you, Roger. I appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah, man. And that's the thing. You know, you don't need my prayers. <laughs> yeah. You need a case of rum. You know, that's, you know, and, and for instance, like recently we've had these uh, EF4 and 5 tornadoes, uh, you know, 200, 190 mile an hour winds that were three quarters of a mile wide that went 90 miles. I mean, that's just catastrophic. And the funny thing is, you know, people were who the people who the tornado just happened to skip their house. Mm -hmm. and well, we prayed to Jesus and asked Jesus to spare us from the thing. And I'm like, lady, that's the exact same prayer that all the multitudes mm -hmm. of people who died because the hurricane killed them that day said also. They yep. said the same prayer. But, you know, you think this thing skipped you because Jesus had it? No, there is no Jesus. But, you know, again... You know, people, if, if that can give them some peace when they have a loved one die or something, oh, they're in heaven now. You know, I get that. I get that. But, um, you know, when I die, my lady's going to know, hey, he had a great time and yeah. he's not burning in hell or something like that. You know, there's like uh, Ron Reagan's uh, commercial says he's on the, you know, on the airways all the time. So, um, yeah. And so let's see. Um, oh, so now. You know, uh, Simon, you had told me that Larry Farkas had contacted you and, mm -hmm. you know, he said, hey, you know, why don't I come on the show? And um, my my answer to that uh, is, is what the fuck for? I mean, here's the thing about Larry. OK, ask Larry, why weren't you in the before the time video with Roger? Mm -hmm. And the answer to that question is because he asked me to falsify my income to the United States Treasury, to the IRS, and and because he was wanting to rip off uh, and not report his income like the other band members, all of them, all four of them. And that's why he wasn't in the before the time video. Our friendship ended right there. I'm like, fuck this dude. And so, yeah, there's no, there's no point for him to be in on these interviews. He can do his own interviews. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a dead Ted Kirkpatrick mm -hmm. of Tourniquet. You know, I, I produced the first Tourniquet album with uh, Bill Toyer, who had worked with Slayer, and we had a great time. Uh, it was a great experience for me. And, um, you know, it turned out in the NC, in the Bible, it says, Jesus says, look, many are going to come to me saying, Lord, Lord, didn't we do great works and wonders in your name? And he's going to say to them, get the fuck out of here. I never knew you. Mm -hmm. And Ted Kirkpatrick is one of those people who are going to be told, get the fuck out of here. I never knew you. And Ted was a total, he fucking, you know, all these people, oh, he was so great. And he was this and that. And he was loved God. And it's like, no, he was an, he, trust me, if I told you what I knew about Ted Kirkpatrick, like what I know about uh, Jimmy Kintner from uh, Frontline Records and what I know about, you know, uh, Larry Farkas and, and, and Steve Rowe of, of, of uh, Mortification, which I'll get into right now in a minute for you. Um, dude. These people are are were fucking wicked, man. And their religious costume. They were able to play it off and still do to this day. I'm sure Larry's playing it off and uh, Steve Rose playing it off and Ted Kirkpatrick played it off. Bob Beeman has been playing it off. But uh, yeah, Jesus is going to send them uh, away into flames and shit like that. And um, again, I'm an atheist. I don't believe any of that shit. But 
since they do, let's put the fear of fucking to them because they don't deserve being told, oh, you're going to go to a heaven. They're not. If there were a heaven, they're not going. And like Steve Bro, that ungrateful little fucking rodent uh, for mortification, I, I produced their album. I flew down to Australia. I did everything I could to help them. And like, I, you know, you sent me a couple of the pages of one of his uh, his book or something that he wrote. Well, let me, let, like, me, let me, I don't yeah. know, but let me prefix that because so people know the context. I had sure. bought uh, his book and read it and he devoted about a chapter and a half to you. So I, you know, screenshotted you some stuff just because I wanted your input. And, you know, I've actually uh, Facebooked uh, Steve and would like to have him on the show at, at some point, but I haven't heard back from him yet. I don't know if he's seen the message or whatnot, but that's the context I want people to know is that, you know, you know, when I was, you know, reading the book, then because I have the source right here, I was like, hey, this is what was printed. Let me have your retort. Continue. Yeah. And so, and that, you know, here's the thing. I really tried to help these guys out. And everything I read in there, he was just like talking shit. And I'm like, dude, I should have never fucking flown down. I never should have fucking did anything for you. You know, he was in my living room in Los Angeles. And we had placed an order for T-shirts. We, had, we thought, you know, hey, let's do this. You know, the, the marketing thing could probably help. And it just, everything became way too much. And I told Steve, I said, Steve, here's your T-shirts. I need you to take these and do this because it's just, I don't have the time, the energy, you know, I'm, I haven't been paid for any of this. Not that I was asking for it at the time, yeah. but as I began to send some shirts out for him, I was realizing, well, shit, I'm spending my time on this and I just don't, I don't have that time, especially yeah. when I was being robbed all that money from frontline. And, um, he wouldn't take the shirts. He's like, oh, Roger, it'd be way too expensive from Australia. And it's like, well, hire a, a, a United States marketing firm, like apparently they're doing now or something. And it's like, and he wouldn't take them. He goes, well, just do your best. And I'm like, dude, it's not going to be good enough for anybody. Yeah. And so if he wants to be talking shit, I'd, let's, he, fuck him, man. I mean, you know, and I hope he dies a horrible, miserable death because Jesus is going to tell him, I never knew you, Steve. But he's, but, and, and the people need to read the text again if they don't understand what, what's happening. The text says they're going to come to him saying, Didn't we do great works? Mm -hmm. Didn't we write all those songs and play all those concerts? Didn't we do great wonders in your name? He said, Fuck you. You know, you're full of shit. And, <laughs> Mm -hmm. So that's the, uh, you know, theological take on those bastards and, and you know, the likes of them. And so um, in any case, uh, in the last interview, you know, I suggested everybody watch the Richard Dawkins video series, The God Delusion. Mm -hmm. And um, again, he's put out another thing called the Faith Schools Menace. And mm -hmm. that's again where he's talking about kids, man. Mm -hmm. These people, these adults who were selling you uh, Simon, they were selling you horrific vengeance rising lyrics at the age of 12. I mean, that's the thing. They don't care, man. Yeah. They they want to make their money. And, uh, and, and, and dude, and they're selling it to children. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I it's like, so that's why I told uh, this bitch, Adele Meisenheimer, or uh, whatever her name is, um, I said, listen, if you, let me know what stores he's being sold at so that we can put up the phone number and say, here, call Roger if you're buying his lyrics. He'd like to talk to you. Wouldn't do that. Wouldn't let me know what stores they're selling them in. And so that's why, Simon, where you're going to come in, because everybody, what Simon and I are going to be doing, uh, I would meet with my attorney this week, is I'm going to, Simon's going to come in as a power of attorney, something to that effect, where he will have complete control over the Vengeance Rising catalog and all of the merchandise, because I've, I've got too much other things to do. Um, you know, especially being in bed this long from uh, dealing with uh, all the medical things I'm dealing with. And, and I am healing. I am getting better. Good. But yeah, so so Simon's going to be taking care of that and getting involved in that. And, um, you know, uh, so it's it's uh, just one of those things where, like, and again, like the last time, I kind of lost my train of thought there because I'm looking at the other points I wanted to get to before yeah. we close that's, off. That's, that's, and, and the thing is, I want people to, I'm going to say it straight up. I did not ask Roger for this. He, right, right. You know, I've not been hinting for this. So I've not been pushing for this at any time. He brought it up the other night because he just doesn't have the time. And, you know, I have more time available than Roger to do what I can do for him so that he gets paid justly what he's doing. I don't... I, I've said it before. I don't want the money. I'm not about, this is not about me trying to, to horn in and try and make a million dollars off of somebody else's hard work. It's not it. 
you know. I and mean, here's the I, thing, everybody. Uh, See, Simon came when I was preaching. So that means something to me now that he's become an atheist like I am. And so I would like somebody who's doing what he's doing. He's out there, you know, making inroads into people's uh, understanding of uh, their mentalities and, you know, helping them see that there's a great life without theism. Mm -hmm. uh, as he pointed out, you have a great life, constitutionally driven. Uh, you have, it's a moral life. It's, it's a great life. And so for someone to, to lie to people and say, no, it's not, you're going to end up burning in flames. That's bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. And uh, so how many, how many minutes have we been going? Uh, we got five left. Okay. Um, well, let's see here. So I mentioned Joy Berry and um, let's see here. Oh man. I had so many points over here. Dude, that I want to get the to. one thing that Maybe. I would like, I would, I'd yeah. like to do a quick point I want to make. And, mm -hmm. Have, I think having uh, uh, learned people put you on a, on a path of knowledge is a great thing. This is something I was thinking about a few days ago, and I'm a big fan of, 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 uh, of, of uh, Carlin and uh, Hitchens and Dawkins and Penn Gillette and a lot of other great, great uh, Asian yeah. thinkers and whatnot. But at the, but you know, I want people to know this though, at the end of the day, whether you don't need a PhD to come to the realization of truth. You know, you don't have to be a smart person to just be able to look and read that Bible and see the the holes, the lies, the 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 atrocity that 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 book contains. You know, yes, I'm glad I've read you know uh, you know these these other people because it gives me more ammunition when I'm talking to Christians. But I don't think that you have to be. I'm just saying, you know, people should have more faith in themselves. And be able to judge and be able to be confident in their own judgment, walking away from from any any kind of theistic ideology that really does not make sense, you know, and isn't provable. So, I mean, yes, I like having tools and listening to smart people, but I want people to empower themselves in their own minds and their own brain and their own opinions. Saying, you know, I'm not. I just don't want people to follow Hitchens the way that people follow the Bible. You know what I mean? Come up with your right. own. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come up with your own your own circumstances. Come up exactly. with your own thought process. You know, do your own research. Don't listen to anybody. Listen to your heart. Listen to your brain, and it's going to put you in the right direction. And so, before we close out, um, you know, I was I was noting that I twice in the first and second episode I had mentioned you know the so called healings, and people would probably say, well, well, what exactly happened? Okay, I had written all the big names that you are, that are so called healers. Because my perspective was this, listen, if, if, if Jesus is, you know, having crippled people get up and walk and blind people see, we should go to the heads of China, the heads of India, the heads of Russia, everywhere, because that would be a fine reason for them to convert. But there aren't any, and that's why they haven't done so. That's why, you know, right now Joe Biden's at the G7, but he's not talking to any about uh, anybody's healings because there aren't any. And one of the last guys that I had talked to extensively over months was Harold Helms from the Angelus Temple. It was a International Church of the Four Square Gospel in Los Angeles, and um, Amy Simple McPherson's uh, Den of Thieves. And, um, you know, he um, was was one of the guys who started the life Bible college where my, the woman that I ended up marrying, you know, I went to the, go to their life Bible college, but they wouldn't let me, you know, go to any of the classes. Cause I didn't have the money. I said, well, can I just like sit in and listen? They're like, no, if you don't got the money, you can't learn about the God. I'm like, Oh, if there is a God, he fucking hates your guts. Yep. So what I did was I got the prettiest girl in the school and I started having sex with her. And we ended up getting married down the <laughs> But Harold Helms, yeah, I would tell him. I would say, yeah, Harold, you know, uh, so, you, you know, you're you a big wig in the healing thing here. Um, I need something that I can take to the heads of China, India, Russia, and all over the world and, and show them as evidence. So, okay, Roger, I'll get it to you. I'll get it to you. You know, so I'd let one, two months go by. I'd come back to him because he lived, he was working just blocks from where I lived. Mm -hmm. uh harold um i was I, i'm waiting you know you said you're gonna get me you know some of the evidences of the healings oh roger oh roger we'll get to it we'll get to it at the very end of it all after about half a year of this going on um 
you know, I called him and I said, you know, Harold, and he's all, Roger, why are you rocking the boat? Aren't things going good for you now? He was talking financially. He was talking about yeah. I had a place, I had a wife, I had this and that. There were no healings. Why was I rocking the boat? Why was I making a big deal about it? Everybody was making money. Everybody was something. I wasn't making no money. I wasn't happy. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, my idea of going to Xi Jinping, who was, it was somebody else back then, but, uh, or, you know, to, uh, you know, all of these different world leaders. Um, and, and, you know, it was just ridiculous. It, it was a scam. It was all a scam. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's a one point of reference you guys can look into because yeah. even his, his obituary page were like everybody who knew Harold loved him. And I'm like, no, we didn't. I fucking hated him. I fucking, you know, confronted him over and over and over on healing. And he finally came out with the notion that it was bullshit. If things were going good for you, don't rock the boat. Just leave it alone. I'm like, oh, holy fuck that shit. You know, so, yeah, I remember seeing Benny Hinn when I was 13. Me and my mom and dad drove down to Anaheim when he was playing and just actually seeing really sick people looking for hope, looking for, looking right. for God to touch their life, looking for that real miracle. And just the the showmanship and the falsivity of it and it, it, it even back then it broke my heart going you know because it was just such a scam it's such a scam and, and you know in in the richard dawkins uh film the god delusion the first like 10 minutes of it are from lord in france where they claim that the three girls uh saw mary the apparition of mary and now every year countless uh, thousands of people go there Mm -hmm. and you know so there have been hundreds hundreds of thousands of people over the past century that have been there dipping their hands in the water and mm -hmm. none of them here they say that there were 66 authentic miracles out of hundreds of thousands it's like so jesus is too busy to heal all the rest of the people yeah. what's the problem you know it, it was just you know and so people it's called the god delusion it's for free on youtube so listen dude um I, I'm I'm looking forward to having some reports uh, from people so we can get them this uh, guitar yeah. when I do kick it. And, um, you know, so uh, we'll get to more once we get a lot more views. And yeah, um, please, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, the thing is, I'd like to hear from the fans. I'd like to hear from the people, you know, please, you know, subscribe, you know, comment, uh, like, like the videos, reach out, email the show, email Roger, call Roger, man. I would like to, at one point, maybe even have a couple couple of people you know that that are interesting and have really something to say you know have have a good discussion between two or three of us you know what i mean i want it yep. like you want it. i want it to be interactive this is not just me for my own kick i'm i'm trying to to change lives and change minds here you know what i mean and if you guys can't interact or you know you know i mean in hey what you know I'm, i seriously doubt it would ever happen but i mean you know you try and change my mind man give, give me the <laughs> give me the evidence you know what i mean but i would like some people to really start you know and even just even if you want to give roger a call just be like hey man even if i am a christian man i'm rooting for you i'm hoping for you you know you, you know whether he he impacted you on a good or bad way you like my show you don't like me whatever man let's 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 do something fun i'll tell you what we can also do that's fun is yeah. have any anybody that all they got to do is send us uh their area code and i'll send them 10 tongue speaking churches where they can go in with the recorder record the babbling that's going on and then take it to a linguistic section and say what languages are these people speaking it's holy brother you can say it's not above <laughs> yeah no this is babbling yeah. and, and i do i bet that there are some crews of people of a con men who probably are acting like they're new to the area, but they're speaking a language that somebody else is. That's the language that I know. How does he know it? He's never been to my country. You know, I'm sure it's yeah, something like that's going on. I do some I'm, I'm sure at so, this so. point the church probably has, you know, speaking in tongues, you know, specialists that, you know, like, oh, I, uh, the Lord's telling me what you're saying. You know what I mean? Right, right, you know, right. That's the right. Thing with, uh, I actually just saw this uh, Ricky Gervasis. Uh, uh, said this, and this is this is a great statement. If 
we got rid of science as we knew it today, within a thousand years, that science would still be what it was a thousand years. You know, that's not, science isn't going to change. The outcome is still going to be the same if we started over. But you take religion and get rid of it for a thousand years, nothing will come back the same because it's all man-made, you know? Right, right, exactly. It's all man-made, you know? And, you know, I mean, that's definitely my point of view. It's your point of view. It's it's what atheists think of. And, you know, just, yeah, comment. Comment, Christians. Let's, let's hear what you got to say. And please say something that we haven't heard. You know, I, I don't want to hear a thousand, you know, well, it's my faith. We know it's faith. I know it's faith. I know what faith is. I used to have that faith. Roger used to have that faith. We used right. to work the same way you guys did. So, you know. <laughs> All right, bro. So listen, uh, I will talk to you next time. And um, we'll have a, a longer session then, of course. But um, for tonight, let's leave people with the challenge to get in touch. Yeah. And have some Read fun it, with those you know? videos. Get, and... get to the man's will. You know, have some fun. Right. With it. Right. All right, brother. I'll talk no, to you bro. soon. Talk to you soon.